at how the cost volume profit model applied to a company that produced only one product or sold only one product. Now there are not many companies that do that so many companies sell a range of products and the question then is how do I use the cost volume profit to determine the break-even, target net sales, and the margin of safety of a company that sells multi-products. Well, we begin by doing a review of the cost volume profit model. Now this model, recall, examines how the effects of changes in volume affect costs and how those two uh, ultimately affect the company's profit. Understanding these relationships is very important profit planning. Also in determining which product mix is the most optimal for a company as well as maximizing our production facilities. All of these questions are questions that will be addressed in this module. Now to begin with, management needs the information in a format that would help them make these decisions. That format, as we have covered, is a cost volume profit income statement. We don't change the basics of the income statement. We simply rearrange those costs that are variable and those costs that are fixed, and we introduce what's called the contribution margin. Now here's an example. We've taken this statement, looked at all the costs, determined which ones are variable and which ones are fixed, and we produce what's called a cost volume profit income statement. And you notice there's a new line here, the contribution margin, 320,000. Now that's a contribution margin in total. We can also determine the contribution margin per unit, if we know the number of units that were sold, and in this case, 200. So therefore, that's the way a basic income statement can be expressed into a management type of statement here called the variable costing statement or it's called the cost volume profit income statement. From that then we can do some break-even analysis. Break-even recall is zero profit. So therefore Vargo Video's income statement shows that the total contribution margin is 320 and the contribution margin per unit is 200. Now we can also express that as a contribution margin ratio that is the contribution margin as a percentage of sales and in this case it's 40 percent so recall if i want to determine the break-even point in units i divide the fixed cost by the contribution margin per unit if i want the break-even in sales dollars i simply divide the fixed cost by the contribution margin ratio now of course the hundred thousand units sell for five hundred dollars a unit 500,000 is break-even point in dollars. So same, just expressed in different ways. Now, that gave me a zero profit. If I desired a profit of 250,000, then basically, how much do I need in contribution to give me my fixed cost plus my target net income when my contribution margin per unit is 200? Well, the required sales in units would be 2,250. Expressed in dollars, I use the ratio. And so therefore I can use both in determining the target net income. Now the margin of safety is a measure of how risky the company is. That is, how much more are they selling now than they need to sell to break even. That is a cushion. That tells you how far sales can drop percentage-wise or in absolute dollars before the company is in a negative position. So in this case, margin of safety expressed in dollars is 300,000. But it's more relevant to take the margin of safety in dollars and apply that and take it as a ratio of actual sales. And in this case, we know that uh, business activity can drop 37.5% before this company would be in a lost position. Now we can also use the CVP analysis in changing business environment. Here is some of the data, the selling price, the variable cost, the fixed, and the break-even in sales. Now keep in mind you have to do profit planning. So in doing that, you're thinking about the future and you're playing what-if games. What if I change this? What if I change that? Well, this model is very well designed for that. 
For example, let's say a competitor is offering the question is should we also offer a 10% from 500 down to 450 and therefore our contribution margin will go down. So our new contribution margin, the old one was 200 is now 150. My break even in sales goes quite a bit up. 1333. So the question is would we sell that many units before we become profitable? if we offer that 10% discount. Okay, another case. We invest in some equipment that will lower the cost of direct labor required to make these camp quarters. However, our fixed costs will go up 30%, but our variable costs will decrease by 30. What would the effect be on my new break even? Well, if my fixed costs go up by 30%, there'll be 260,000. If my contribution margin per unit then will also go up and therefore my break-even sales will go down. So this alternative would mean that we'd hit break-even a lot earlier than we normally would. Number three, our supplier of raw materials has just announced a price increase. The higher cost is expected to increase the variable cost by $25. Management decides to hold the line on selling price it plans a cost-cutting program that will save seventeen five per month. We already are making 80000 per month on a sale of 1400 camcorders. What increase in units sold would be needed to get the same level? Well, again, the variable cost increases to three twenty five. Fixed costs are reduced. Contribution margin now is one seventy five. So I have to cover my fixed costs and give me a target net income of 80000 on a contribution margin of 175 So my break-even in sales, or the required sales, not break-even in this case, is 1,500 units because we're talking contribution margin per unit. So that's how we use the cost volume profit with changing business environments. Now what about companies that are multi-product? Well, if a company is selling different products over a period of time, they get to know that if they sell one of these, they sell two of these. So they basically are able to determine what the product mix is. Now, we're going to take, for example, here a two product company. And this company has unit sales of 80% printers and 20% computers. So their sales mix is 80 20. And this is very important keep in mind. We're going to assume that sales mix remains constant. Well, each product, you see, has a different selling price and each product has a different uh, contribution margin. Companies can compute the break-even and mix of two products by determining the weighted average contribution. For example, Vargo sells camcorders and television sets. They sell 1,500 camcorders, 500 TV sets. We first need the sales mix, and that obviously we're selling 2,000 units in total, 1,500 camcorder, therefore 75% of our sales are camcorder, and 25% would be televisions. Next, we look at what the contribution margin per unit would be. Well, the selling price, camcorders, is 500, and variable cost are 3. Contribution margin is 2. So. The televisions were 1,000, variable cost 500, total contribution margin 2,500, or 500, sorry, and it's 25% sales mix, camcorder 75, fixed cost 275. So the formula is to come up with the weighted average contribution margin units. And we take the contribution margin of the camcorder times the sales mix, plus the contribution margin of the TV plus the sales mix. And I come up with a weighted average unit contribution margin of 275. Now you see the fixed costs are common to both the camcorders and televisions. So therefore when we do the break even, the fixed cost in total divided by this weighted average contribution margin gives me the break even point in units. Now that's total units, camcorders and televisions. So then you have to figure out, okay, of the 1,000 units, 75% are camcorders, so it's 750, 250 televisions. And just to prove that out, camcorders, 750 in sales, 
total contribution margin per ordinary contribution margin per unit, total contribution margin 150 and 125, and I've covered my fixed costs. So there's my break even. Now, if I want the break even in dollars, I do the same thing. And you see, quite often, when a big company, or let's just say a merchandise company, have so many products, and each product has different selling, different variable costs, different contribution margin. So it's pretty difficult to do it on uh, product lines. You do it more on divisions the male clothing area, the female clothing, the children, that kind of thing. Or you can do it on product lines, but not individual products. So this is the benefit of the contribution margin ratio instead of the contribution margin per unit. The ratio is very useful to us in this fashion. I'd rather look on it a unit basis, let's look at it as a division basis. So, the sales. We can track the sales for the indoor, we can track the sales for the outdoor. And we see that the total sales are a million, 200 or 20% indoor, 80% outdoor. So therefore, we have the sales mix. Secondly, we have the contribution margin, and we can determine the contribution margin ratio, 80%, 80,000 as divided into 200, or 40%. 240 is divided into 800, or 800, 800 divided into 40 would give me 30%. Now I could put it together, but this time I'm using the ratio. Indoor plant division, contribution margin ratio 40%, sales mix, plus contribution margin for outdoor times the sales mix gives me the weighted average contribution of 0 0.32. Therefore, my break even in dollars. 937,500. When I break it out, 20% uh, is indoor, so therefore the required break even for my indoor division is 187.5. My break even level of activity for my outdoor division is 750. Now you can see if the, the sales mix changes, then the weighted average contribution margin ratio would change and we would have a different break even. So that's how we use it. Contribution margin ratio, we most often do it with divisions or product lines. Well, this is not just a half chance. When you walk into a company, any store, the products you see at the, at the front are the products that have the highest unit contribution margin. Management knows this, so they continually push and give prominent uh, viewing to the high contribution margin. For example, if you go to the grocery store and you're looking for your breakfast cereal, well, it just so happens the ones that are at eye level are the ones that have the highest contribution. The ones down below, lower contribution. Now that's contribution, not selling price. I'm talking two different things. Management's always pushing towards you, the units that are higher contribution. You go to McDonald's, the contribution margin on a hamburger is very, very little, very 5%. However, what do they push at you? Well, of course, where they make their money is on the fries. They sell them, it does cost them that much to manufacture, and also on the uh, drinks, same thing. So they always want to upsize you. Why, are they worried because your weight? No, they want to push the high contribution margin products. And I noticed just recently in McDonald's, they're trying to sell donuts. But one of their biggest uh, contribution margin thing are those apple pies. So you see the answer to this review question is this. Management knows all about contribution margin, product line, division, and all of that. And so take a look. When you go into the store next, look at the product. If it's perfume, you know, my goodness, the contribution margin on that is very high. If it's DVD discs, the same thing. You generally see that at the front of the store. So that's the importance in understanding contribution margin.